My name's Jonathan Weiner, and I'm a mastering engineer. ニュートロンってすごいソフトウェアですけれどもこれってトラックに対してのオプティマイズ最適化してくれますが重要なのはミックスですよねそういった時にニュートロンはどうやって使うんですか The first thing you want to do in mixing is just get a balance、mm-hmm. before you do anything yeah, yeah. else, right? So, this is it. Okay. But then, once you've gotten the balance as good as you can get, and this is the thing that we all struggle with, is you know, everything's working pretty well, but you can't quite hear the vocal well enough. Maybe the kick drum and the bass drum aren't quite interacting the way you want. And so, you have to think about managing the relationship between the two of、yeah. them. And so,、uh, we've built this tool that's called the masking meter. You have two sounds that are in the same range, and the louder one is going to make it hard yeah, to hear the yeah, quiet one. Masking, that's always right. Sm- right. And、one. that sounds like a bad thing, but there's also blending, right? Sometimes you have two sounds, like two vocals, a vocal harmony, where they're blending together. They might be masking or they might be blending, right? So this is not to say that we're necessarily, we necessarily have a problem, but we've built something to help you understand where tracks overlap. And to manage that overlap. So、mm-hmm. let me show you what that looks like. Okay. And you'll see this word masking right here.、Mm-hmm. Okay. This is the drums. I've already labeled these tracks. Okay. And I'm going to say, I want you to look at the bass、mm-hmm. in relation to the drums. Oh, okay. So down here, you see、mm-hmm. we've got the EQ、mm-hmm. for the drums. On the top, and we've got the EQ for the bass all at the same time. That in and of, in and of itself is kind of cool, right? So now when we're listening to the two of them, I can adjust one and just another without having to open up different plugins, just all in one window. Alright, so I'm gonna play the track. Okay, now there are two places in the display where masking shows up. This white area is already beginning to show us overlap, which you kind of might expect, right? That it would show up in the low end, in the bass area between the bass and the drums.、Mm-hmm. If I play with the sensitivity slider, oh, see up here? Now we're getting a more specific idea of where the interaction is occurring. I can make it more sensitive. Okay? And it's saying, well, If you want to really dial in to areas of overlap, there's something up here around 900 hertz, there's something here around 80 hertz, and now if I want to get better separation between the kick and the bass, well, let's say I want to get the, the kick drum,、uh, maybe the bass out of the way of the kick drum. All right, so I'll pull up an EQ, and you notice I can EQ the bass from the drum window, right? So I can And as I pull that down, and maybe I can pull this one down, we'll get less masking. Now you have to use your ear. The goal is not to make all of the red disappear. This is just to help you understand where the overlap is occurring. Maybe I'd like a little bit more bottom from the kick and a little less from the bass. So let me get rid of that filter and I'll click inverse link.、Mm. What does that do? That allows me to take one EQ and in a single motion boost. In one region and cut in that same region from that other instrument. So now I can go back and forth and manage how much bass is, how much low end is coming from each one of those instruments. And if I get it pretty close, but maybe I want a little bit more down there, I can unlink them and continue to adjust. So this masking meter helps us navigate, once we get the balance right, refine the mix and, and get the mix even clearer and even better.、Okay. Can I show you one more thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there's another aspect of the EQ.、Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn on, let's see, how about the guitar? Pull up Neutron here. In the EQ, func- in the EQ module,、mm-hmm. we've got a learn button. And you see that the EQ nodes have moved around. Now, if I hit Option Click, Right? It heard that resonance. It heard that resonance. That one.、Mm-hmm. So it gave me some EQ points and it says, you might want to think about these. Listen to them. So, you know, this is something that we do all the time as engineers is look around for resonances. 
right, and think about what we might want to pull down or where there's um, like that low end in this guitar. Maybe it's kind of nice and full and we want to add a little bit, but it's, it's helping us more quickly identify points of interest in the sound of the guitar. So if I just pull those, let me just pull these two down a little bit, mm -hmm. play it before and after. Mari sound to Korea sound. Yeah, that's right. So it's, it's amazing how accurate it is. You know, it, it kind of blows my mind. It's actually really cool as an ear training tool. You know, just to, to run the learn function on a bunch of instruments and notice what it's doing, and, and it helps you begin to recognize uh, how to EQ better. Mm -hmm. So even just as a way of training your ear as, a, as an audio producer or an audio engineer, it's very cool. Mixing is really hard and mixing is really fun because you have all of these different tracks and you've got to bring them into a single picture. The thing that I think you really want to make sure you do is think like the arranger, right? The mix engineer's job is to take the idea of an arrangement, like what instrument at any given moment is the most important and help the listener focus on that. So your decisions as a mix engineer have to be kind of like the arranger and the composer.